Hey guys, welcome to Adobe Live this morning, getting started. I'm Spencer Nugent. I'm an industrial designer, illustrator, all around creative. I most of all love using Adobe Creative Cloud products. And today I'm going to be doing a continuation of what we started last or yesterday, last time. So welcome. Thanks for joining. If you're here yesterday, appreciate your suggestions, feedback, feel free to drop comments in the chat. I will be watching the Behance chat. Um, so that's where I'll be looking for comments, feedback, all that good stuff. Um, <clears throat> once again, just want to say I hope you guys are doing all right. I hope that you are uh, keeping your eyes open, keeping your hearts open, keeping your minds open, staying positive. What I've found is that uh, creativity is something that is a natural extension of what's inside of us. And the last few days for me, I've um, struggled a little bit, but I just want to share that with you to let you know that I'm okay. Um, creativity has given me a means of processing through a lot of my feelings and thoughts. And I hope you can do the same. I hope that drawing, which is what we're going to do today, um, and thinking about some positive things can help us turn things for the better. But most importantly, Let's stay positive and keep moving forward. Okay, so I'm gonna switch over here to, if I look to the side, I'm looking at my other monitor, by the way. I'm not ignoring you guys, I promise. Um, so we're gonna continue. Yesterday I started this illustration of my father and we used photo reference. For those who weren't there, I'll just do a quick rundown so you can see what we did. So let me turn off the sketch. And we kind of started with some photos here of my dad and my son and me and my parents and use that as inspiration reference to create a rough drawing with some pencil, red pencil. Hopefully the audio is a little bit better today. <laughs> By the way, if, you, if there are any issues, let me know. Um, so started with that, did a red line drawing, tried a couple other options and then ultimately started working on our final illustration right here. And we talked about layer ordering and how to organize things. So if I skip a beat, let me know. Um, I'd be happy to, to go over that again. Um, so the next step here is we want to add some text, or I want to add some text rather to this drawing. So I'm going to make a new layer. And like I said yesterday, you can always use the menu commands. So we can go to layer, new, layer, or command shift N and let me get this mouse out of the way here. I'm gonna call this text, okay? And we kind of started with some text. I thought about it last night and I was like, yeah, maybe, I'm, maybe I'll change this. We'll, we'll keep it a little bit, a little bit simpler here. All right, but we're gonna use the same principle, okay? So on this text layer, what I'm gonna do actually is, remember that trick I showed you? So if you right click on a layer with the move tool and that's the arrow that is the arrow on the uh, top left. Okay. Get rid of this just a sec. All right. Okay. So that lower third should be gone. Okay. So if we if we tap on this arrow on the the top left, pardon me, um, and then right click on the pixels. Okay. Pick. I like to think of pixels like little light brights. Okay, some of them are on, some of them are off. But if I right click on these pixels, it's gonna give me a set of options as to what these pixels could be. So you can see the top here references sketch lines, which is our group. We also have a group called colors and then a layer called shirt. Okay, and I was, I was good yesterday, reasonably good about labeling things. So it should be a little easier to uh, select things if you label. Yeah, I think my connection was a little bit spotty there for a sec, Steve, my apologies. Okay, right click. And now you see sketch lines, dad lines, backgrounds. Okay, so I'm gonna tap dad lines and immediately in my layers palette to the right, I jump to the dad lines layer. So just a quick little tip and shortcut for you to help you work through some of your disorganization. If you're like me and you just like to move fast while you're drawing, sometimes it's helpful to know how to find those layers. Okay, and the reason I'm doing this is I wanna actually take a selection of these sketch lines. Okay, so remember we have this lasso tool and there's a few options here. We have the regular lasso tool, polygonal and magnetic lasso tool. I'm gonna to use the polygonal lasso tool because it is a little bit easier. 
to make a selection here. I want to have this text wrap around this illustration in a somewhat circular fashion. So that's what I'm trying to do. Let's duplicate this line. I'm going to use it as a guide. Okay, so I'm just making a selection here all the way around. Okay. Steve says, I like big sketches, I cannot lie. I, I, I agree. Drawing bigger is actually a lot easier <laughs> sometimes than, than drawing small. Okay, so now I've made this selection, and I know it's selected because we have the marching ants. I like to call them the marching ants. We have the marching ants around this, around this area, and I'm on the deadlines layer. So now I want to do layer, new, layer via copy. Okay, just like that. Now, I am doing this the hard way because I like hand lettering, um, but there are easier ways to do it as well if you want to put type on a path, for example. Um, but we're going to do this, we're going to make it hand drawn today, okay? So I've now, I think I skipped ahead a little bit. Okay, so there's my new layer with my line, layer three, okay? We can even call this guide one, just to be clear. And also another tip, if you're working with layers and you want to organize a little bit, you can right click on the layer and you can actually assign it a color. So let's say this is a guide and I just want to quickly reference and know where a guide is. I can just tap on red and now I have a red tag on that layer. Okay, so it's a, it's a good way to visually organize things very quickly and efficiently. Okay, so I have guide one and I actually want to duplicate this. Now there's a shortcut for this, a couple ways to do it. I can hit control J on the keyboard or I can click and drag this layer onto the plus sign in my layer palette. That's the second button from the right. And now I have a guide one copy. It's copied the color of that label, <clears throat> pardon me, and it's also copied the text. So we want to change that and we'll call it guide two. We'll eventually merge these. So and then we'll have to rename, but just want to show you guys how to organize a little bit. Okay, so now guide one, I'm going to transform. You can do select, well, let's go back here, select, or pardon me, edit, transform, free transform, or control T. And now we have this box with these little squares and I can pull on these squares and now make adjustments. All right, so there's my first guide. And because I want the text to follow the shape, I decided it'd be best to just copy that shape. And now for guide two, I can do the same thing. And now we can scale out like so. And if we need to make some adjustments, you know, it looks like it's a little bit tighter on one side than the other. If you hold shift on the keyboard, it's gonna allow you to uh, asymmetrically adjust the shape of your object. And if you hold alt, it's going to make that equal. Now, remember, I also showed you guys this tool yesterday, the warp tool. So if I tap this tiny icon here, it looks like kind of looks like a fan with a grid and a little curve underneath it. If I tap on that, I now have the ability to actually just click in here and pull things where I need them to be. Okay. And this is just a guide. So I'm not worried about this extra stuff here on these lines. Okay, so now these two layers, guide two and guide one, I'm gonna flatten these out, meaning combine them. Now remember, you can kind of think of your layers like really thin sheets of paper, maybe even transparent, that you can stack stuff on top of, right? So if I select these two and go to layer, merge layers, now I have one layer. It did eliminate my guide, my, my label color here. So if I wanna put that back, we can just add red and we'll just call this guides, okay? Now, since this is a guide, what I wanna do is adjust the opacity. And we have this property in the layers palette to the top and the right, super handy. There's opacity for layers, there's opacity for brushes. You can really do a lot of fun things with opacity and stacking these things in layers in Photoshop. But for our purposes, let's take this opacity and adjust it down to whatever is comfortable for you. I wanna be able to see these lines, but I also don't want to have them get in the way. So I'm gonna do 15% here, all right? So let's jump back to my text layer up here. Actually, let's drag this layer up. You can click and drag any layer and put it in any order you want, much like you would with real sheets of paper in real life. So on this text layer, we're gonna use our red and blue pencil technique that we use to sketch this little illustration of my father here. And 
Let's jump to our paint brushes. If you don't have these brushes, it's okay. Photoshop Creative Cloud has tons of awesome free brushes that you guys can use in your illustrations. All right. Okay, so the other thing I want to do here, and this is this is going to be a little bit of freehand, um, but let's say this is the center of the illustration. I want I want my text to be equidistant. Okay, so I'm going to just try and eyeball where I want the start and end of my text to text to be. Another way to do this would actually be duplicating this layer and then applying a transform, and we can actually flip horizontal if we right click after transform, flip horizontal. That's going to give me a copy and I can just drag this over. So I have a rough approximation of an exactly uh, symmetrical arrangement for my text. So we'll merge those together instead of me having to draw it twice and try and guess where it is. And if that was a little bit too fast, I'll do it again. So there's my text layer. I drew one line just over and now I'm going to hit layer duplicate layer. Okay. It's going to ask me what I want to call it. Doesn't really matter here. Hit OK. You'll notice, maybe you noticed, maybe not. I'll zoom in so you can see. Here's my layer in red, and it looks a little bit translucent. When I duplicate it, it looks a little darker. Again, because those layers, they build up in color and value and intensity um, as you add and stack things on top of each other. And now we want to go edit, free transform. Okay, and we have our box. The shortcut for zooming out in Photoshop, you can either hit command or control plus or minus on the keyboard. So it's like more or less, or if you hit command or control and space bar, you get this cool magnifying glass and I can zoom in or I can zoom out. All right. Just like that in or out just by dragging either up, down, left, right. I like to kind of move it diagonally and it gives me that, that zoom that I need. All right. So here I have my transform box control around and we, if we right click here, I have a bunch of options. I can rotate 180 degrees, flip horizontal, distort, do perspective stuff, warp. We just want to focus on flip horizontal, tap that. And now you can see we have flipped this line, this guide that I'm making essentially. And now if I drag while holding shift, okay, if you drag it without shift, you can move it anywhere. But if I hold shift and then click and drag, you have these cool little pink lines, pink fuchsia. Um, that are telling me that you are now constrained and constrained meaning I'm going to move this horizontally or vertically, but, or, or at 45 degrees actually. So there's 45 degrees horizontally or vertically, something cool you can play with if you're trying to do something a bit more structured and ordered and you want to feel a sense of control as you're doing this. All right. So this area right here, I'll merge those together. Basically from right here to right here is where I want to say or have my text. Okay. And the other, other little tip here is you can always hit R on the keyboard for that rotate command and rotate the canvas to whatever's comfortable for you. So right now I'm going to just make it simple. We'll do happy father's day. Okay. And these lines are just meant to kind of, identify where I want my letters to be. Okay. So H A P P Y and let's go ahead and rotate here and of F A and notice I'm leaving a little space there. T H. Okay. And I can already tell it's a little bit too wide. So as much as I like hand lettering, it is a little tricky. All right, but we'll get we'll get it. H A. Actually, what I'll do here is let's just do a rough, a rough thing, just to get a sense for how much space I actually need. All right, we'll just go fast. Okay, so now this at least gives me some idea. I can drop the opacity and on a new layer. If you want to do like outline text or you just want to use a chisel brush, whatever you want to do. If you don't like your own handwriting, you can always use the text tool as well. I'm going to use my own handwriting so that it has that personal personal feel 
to it. Now let's see what brush options we have here that we can play with. Of course I have my own brushes that I've made. They're typically more uh, sketch and drawing brushes. So I want to try something that's maybe a bit more calligraphy or something that'll give me um, something a little different, okay? So I have a few brushes here that I've downloaded that I can play with. Um, I do want to show you one quick thing though, however. So if there's a brush and you want to change something about it, for example, you know, right now it's a round brush and you'll notice in this palette we have a few options, size and hardness. If I slide the hardness down when I paint with this, let's see, let's make sure I'm on the right layer. Hmm, interesting. Okay, when I paint with this, you'll notice that it now has a soft edge as opposed to when I crank this up, it now has a hard edge, okay? Um, and I also, let's say I want to change the shape of that brush. I can take these handles on the shape in this window and actually squish it down or, or up. If I squish it down and tap on this arrow and rotate, I now have kind of a calligraphy style brush that I can use here. There's another setting I want to change. Look away if this is too com complicated for you guys, but if you right click on your brush, hit this little wheel, you can get into brush settings. So let's see here. Actually, let's go to window, brush settings. And I'm gonna turn off this thing that says transfer. And transfer is basically a way for me to control some of the uh, opacity settings of the brush, but I really just want a, a real opaque brush, okay? This one has a little bit of buildup too. So I'm gonna turn that off and let's see. Okay, it's coming back. So I'm just gonna save my settings here under new brush preset and now I have a brush that I can use. Okay, so now I'm gonna work on my writing. All right, actually, uh, I'm gonna turn that off. Hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to make I'm trying to make a, a change here, but it's not working. Anyhow, we'll just keep going. So now I have this brush that's at an angle, and on a new layer here, I can start to just write. Okay. And in my case, since the since this brush is not cooperating right now, I'm just gonna have to hit these lines a couple times. But you can just draw and write your text once you have your red line guide down. Okay, so once we're done with this, we'll jump to doing another design. And I'll show you guys how to make patterns and a few cool things you can do with texture and the text tool as well. Okay, we'll just keep writing. Again, if you don't like your own writing, that's okay. You can use the text tool as well if you want. Or just make it your own. So now let's turn off our text and our guides. And there we have our very simple Father's Day. Father's Day printable. Now I'm not gonna print it live here, but um, a couple tips for you if you are printing. Um, you wanna make sure that you obviously, well not obviously, you wanna make sure you do a test print before you commit to you know using all your expensive ink as much as uh, ink can be really expensive on a printer. Um, like I have a really nice printer and so whenever I do something uh, that I'm going to be doing larger or that's going to use a lot of ink. You want to just do a small test print. Make sure that your colors aren't too dark or aren't too washed out. You can play with that. But working in CMYK does help, which is what we've been doing. And trial and error is always and often a swift teacher. Okay, I'm just going to make an adjustment here as well to this main illustration. The text is a little bit cramped, so I can just transform down a little bit. It also helps make the drawing just a little bit tighter. And so that's just creating a simple guide for text. I'm not a text expert as far as writing the text, but I did want it to have a personal feel to it. All right, so let's create a new document here and we can use the same size. So five by seven, 300 uh, pixels per inch, and we're gonna hit create. And we're gonna create another 
design that's themed around Father's Day. So Darina is asking if, the, if that was painted in CMYK from the start. And yes, it was painted in CMYK. If you want to make sure your documents in CMYK, just go to image mode and you're able to select. You can actually see the colors change if you go from RGB to CMYK sometimes if you're in Photoshop. So you just want to make sure you're painting in the right color space so you're not out of gamut. The other tip is, and I covered this yesterday, if you are selecting a color using hue, saturation, brightness, or RGB sliders, or LAB or something else, what you want to do is watch for this little warning. Okay, it's right there. That little warning, it's going to say, click to select in gamut color. Okay, and that's Photoshop's way of trying to pull your color into what is printable. So just a pro tip for you, if you want to find something that is within CMYK and the color space you're working, you can trust the little warning there to kind of help you and guide you. All right. Okay, so back to our new document. For this design, I want to create a pattern as a background and add some text on top to celebrate Father's Day, okay? So for that, we're gonna go ahead and do this, a similar process. You know, when in doubt, rough it out and light till you get it right. We're gonna use our red line, blue line technique. But I do wanna set up some guides like we did last time just to give myself, uh, what do you call those, bumpers when you're bowling? Do you bowl with bumpers? Sometimes I do. <laughs> At least when I go with my kids, I, I put the bumpers up. So guides are kind of like those bumpers for me. So I'm going to go to view. I did turn snap off last time. So I'm going to turn that back on. And that way the guides will snap to increments. I'm working in inches here. So I'm going to have a quarter inch, which is about six millimeters from the border. And that's just to be on the safe side. If you have a printer, usually they can print about a quarter inch away from the edge of the paper reliably, okay? So just to help you out. Christine is asking, how do you rotate your artboard and reset it? Okay, so the R tool is kind of like rotating your paper on a table. If you want to reset that, just make sure the R, I'm not sure if you can do it if the move tool is selected. Oh yeah, you can, awesome, good tip. So. If it's rotated like that, just hit escape. You can be on the move tool, looks like. You can be on the brush tool, anything. Just hit escape and it'll reset to the original orientation of the canvas, okay? And notice when you do rotate, it rotates the guides as well. So everything's being referenced. You're just kind of like you would on a table. When I'm, when I'm drawing, I move my paper around all the time. So it's super handy to be able to do this. All right, so I have my guides in place. You can lock those if you want. Um, I just like to have them in place so I know what my space is. So now I want to do a new layer. So layer, new layer, or command shift N. And we'll call this doodles or doodle rough. And my dad likes a few things. Um, maybe, maybe a bit stereotypical, but he does, he does enjoy steak quite a bit. He is most definitely a carnivore. And so let's jump back to my brushes or whatever brush you like. Um, I think I'm going to do this in, hmm, I'll use the same brush I used last time. So I'm going to go to my sketch day brushes here and let's go to this heavy stencil. All right. It has a nice little texture to it. So I'm going to start drawing some stuff. Um, you know, my dad likes, he likes computers quite a bit. So I'm going to sketch a little laptop doodle here. All right. And just going nice and slow. And my goal here is to just have enough of de enough detail that it feels like a laptop without being too without being too detailed, All right? Because these are going to be small, so I'm not trying to, to recreate exactly what a laptop looks like, but just kind of hint at it. Let's see, that, that would be where the space bar is. Obviously the number of keys is off, but again, just a little icon there. He also enjoys football. So again, maybe a little bit stereotypical. I haven't drawn a football in a while, so let's see if I can do this. Nope, that shape's not right. Okay, that looks, 
That looks pretty good. Here's another little tip for you when you're doing symmetrical things. Um, I believe Photoshop actually has a symmetry option. Let's see, right there. So let's show you a cool little trick. I'm gonna go to a new layer and this little butterfly looking thing, let's do horizontal symmetry. Okay, and now I have this line and this line is my line of symmetry, pretty cool. I'm gonna hit enter and now well, you, you place it wherever you want. And now when I draw, it's going to draw the same shape on the opposite side. You see that? Pretty cool. So if I want to get this football symmetrical, we can do something like that or just a quick shape. And now I'm going to turn the symmetry off. And now I can finish this up. Let's put some stitches on the top. You know, I kind of forget what a football looks like actually. <laughs> So I'm just gonna throw a line right through the middle, like so. And let's go ahead and clean up on this sketch. Just a little bit of erasing here. You can always undo, super handy if you make mistakes. But that's just a quick show of the symmetry tool for you. Let's erase what we did before. And I'm just gonna take this sketch and scale it down. I do want the line weight to be a little heavier, so we'll go over this a little bit. I do want some consistent appearance to these elements. So I'm just gonna trace over. And make sure that these lines have approximately the same thickness going around. You'll, this will make sense in just a sec. All right, but my goal here is just to create a few icons. We'll do a couple more. He also, yeah, I did say he likes steak, so let's let's draw a quick, quick steak here. And you can always use pictures as reference if you need to. Maybe a rugby ball. <laughs> I'm definitely not a sports ball person, so I'm I'm. I'm uh, taking some extreme liberties with my drawing of a football. I do like dots, so I'm gonna put some dots on. Whatever style you like to draw in, just draw in that style. Okay, and let's do a steak. Or something that looks like a steak. Has thickness, obviously. And I'm just gonna put a little bone in here, something like that. Maybe just a couple squiggly lines, okay? And let's see, what else does my dad like? Um, I mean, he is Jamaican, so let's put a little flag in here. Why not? All right, so a little S shape like that, two lines. And we'll continue over. Finish our shape. Draw down right here. Okay, so now I have a couple things on the page. This is a little bit long, so let's go ahead and adjust. One of the things I do love working, love about working digitally is the ability to just correct and modify your designs. So the flag looks something, it's actually a lot like the Scottish flag, but something like this, you know, just a simple X. So what I need to do is take this shape and wrap it onto my sketch. So I'm gonna draw a portion of the X right there. And we'll color these in. And let's see if this is wrapping, maybe something like this, okay? Again, just trying to imagine if this shape was wrapping onto a flag here, all right? Um, let me think. He also likes books, so I'll just do one more thing. And if we use it, great. If not, that's okay. All right, just like that.
Actually, not so much that he likes books. He, he values education quite a bit. All right. So I've got some shapes here. And now, <laughs> sorry, Sean. <laughs> we'll just call it a sports ball. We'll call it a, a sports ball. That's what we'll call it. Um, <laughs> he likes sports ball. Okay, so I've got some shapes. Now let's add some color. I'll call this sketches. And let's make a new layer. And yesterday I mentioned working in a non-destructive way. And this is one way to do it where your color is separated from your sketch. So with my sketch lines on top now, we can add some simple color. And I'll just use a hard brush here. Let's go back up. Grab our hard round brush. I'm not sure why the opacity is weird on this brush, actually. Oh, that's why. Okay. If you're, <laughs> I was playing with some other brushes, and if you're wondering sometimes, why is my why is my brush um, behaving this way? It's supposed to be opaque. There's this little icon next to the opacity in the top toolbar that I had selected, and that actually can turn any brush into kind of an airbrush behavior. With an airbrush, the longer you hold that brush on the canvas, it will build up in color. So that, that was selected because I was experimenting on another project. So now I have a solid opaque brush. And let's pick some colors. You know, maybe just a light gray for this laptop. Another cool trick you can use if you're shading in straight shapes or you are very careful, you can use a trick here, which is click in one spot and then click in another spot while holding shift. Okay, if I don't hold shift, I just get dots. If I hold shift after the first click, I get a nice straight line. So it actually makes it easy on this laptop, for example. Uh, let's make sure this is on the right order. Okay, the doodles above the color. Again, because layers are transparent, everything you do responds to the way your layers are gonna be ordered, okay? So on my color layer, if I just click and hold shift, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I now have shaded in the perimeter of the shape, which makes it kind of easy to fill in. Okay, so now I can select my paint bucket, which is, I just know the keyboard command. Okay, right there, <laughs> under gradient. So I'm gonna click and hold, and now I have options. Let's pick the paint bucket tool. And now I can just click. Sometimes what happens with the paint bucket is you do have this little perimeter. You might go, oh, that's, that's kind of annoying. Okay, so let's do that again. Here's the paint bucket. If I click, you have this little perimeter. If I click again, it just does an extra fill and clears that up, all right? So just a little tip, don't freak out, it's all good. On the keys themselves, let's go ahead and have just a slight value change on these keys. And so I'm just gonna paint in with some gray right there boom all right so now i have a simple icon for a keyboard let's color in our sports ball <laughs> sorry guys and football fans out there um i'm not an expert on the anatomy of these these uh sports balls so you'll have to forgive me all right you can even do the shift click technique if your distance is short enough and i do want to show you why this is important, at least for how I work. So let's turn off the doodle layer. Ah, there we go. So let's turn off these sketches and you'll notice the color lines that I've drawn in, they're pretty rough, right? If you pay a little bit more attention to your lines and your line quality, you'll end up with uh, what I think is a good start to then finishing out your illustration. So just a little tip. Focus on the lines and then the color kind of just fills in. Now I do want some dimension similar to the laptop here. So I'm gonna go with a little bit lighter and let's go ahead and just add a little line like that. And maybe on the bottom, we can have something a little darker like that right there, okay? Now the steak. So we'll go for just a nice deep red, maybe brown. I don't know. We'll go for something in between. Something like that. 
do my shift click. It's either wood or steak, but either way, he'll like it. All right, and again, I don't want to get too detailed or anything here, but I will add just a couple um, lines and tone just to shade things out <clears throat> on the side of the steak. For example, just take a smaller brush. If you want to quickly adjust the brush size, you can use your left or right square bracket on your keyboard, and that'll quickly adjust the increment of your brush size. All right. It's maybe a little bit too dark gray, but I think, yeah, it's okay. We can adjust that. I'll show you a trick for adjusting that. I cringed a little bit because these are on the same layer and I'm so in the habit of drawing on different layers. Dyed meat. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's a, a special cut that you haven't seen before. Maybe. All right. You know, drawing from your imagination is interesting because you're kind of left to pull from uh, memory, and memory is memory is malleable and and subject to uh, interpretation. So, pardon me if my steak seems a little bit off here, but we can adjust colors. It's not a big deal. Um, there's also this magic wand tool, so I can click in a color area, and it's going to pick all the pixels that are the same color. Um, if I do want to adjust that, we can go to image adjustments, hue saturation, or control U, and then you can kind of play with things. You know, if you want this to be a little lighter, if you want it to be darker, that kind of thing, pretty easy to do, all right? But I'm just going for something of an icon, icon look, rather than um, trying to make this pixel perfect accurate. Do you want to see? Maybe I'll add just a little white on the perimeter here. I will say, creatively speaking, um, a lot of a lot of my best uh, work and discoveries have been through trial and error. So, um, just a little bit of advice for you guys: if if you're just getting started, don't be afraid to try stuff. And oft times, you just find something that works, and you just roll with it. Um, if you find something that doesn't work, then try again. You know, it's, I think that's, that's just a critical component of uh, being creative and figuring things out. Okay. <clears throat> so now let's do, I'm not super happy with this color palette yet, but the flag here should help. Um, <laughs> I'm probably going to get uh, lambasted for this one, but I believe, let's see. I'm trying to remember which side is green and black. Um, but I know the stripes are yellow. So let's go here. If any Jamaicans are watching, I apologize. <laughs> My brain is, is a little bit off. There's that in gamut warning, so I can just tap that and it's going to give me a color that I can use. If you do have an area selected and you want to fill it, another shortcut you can use. If you want to fill with the foreground, if you hold Alt and then hit Delete, it'll actually fill that area with the foreground. If you hit, if you hit Control or Command and Delete, it will use the background color. So that's kind of what I did there. Quick shortcut, or you can use the paint bucket as well. All right, so let's go and finish off flag here. I'm going to consult the book of knowledge real quick. And that's going to make sure that I get this right. Okay. Got to make sure I get this flag right. Otherwise they'll never forgive me. Just a sec guys. All right. So it is black on the sides. I was, I was correct. All right. So on the top here, I'm going to throw in some green. Just make this selection. You could also paint this in. Just whatever, whatever works for you, whatever's faster for you, you can use that method to get your colors in. All right, so now I have some green there. And here's an example of just painting it in. So with Photoshop, like I said, there's always multiple ways to do things. 
just find whatever works for you. I'm having to do this. Well, I guess I don't have to do it here. Um, let's pick a black. Okay. And we can, we should be able to just paint a border here. And the reason I say that is when you turn off the sketches, you can kind of see what's happening. So if I draw a black right here, for example, and then fill this in and now turn my sketches back on, you'll see that I have uh, this icon. All right, so just for the purposes of color, I think I'm gonna make this book blue, just to get an interesting mix of colors here. So let's do this and just pick a, pick a nice blue here. I'll just fill that in. Oops and let's take a darker blue and just run it along the spine and once we finish our shapes we'll make our pattern do some text and bring this all together okay so just a little blue there again just adds a little bit of dimension to the simple book if we want to add some gray we can do that as well to the pages for example just again clicking holding shift and dragging. All right, so we've got a few things here um, in our sketch. On the laptop screen, I'm gonna add one more thing. One more thing, just something of a highlight right there. All right, so that should help it, help it not feel so flat. Okay, so now I have a few shapes. Um, I'm trying to decide if I want to add any more, but we can use these and I'll, I'll show you using some simple shapes, what we're going to do first, and then we'll take these illustrations and uh, make our pattern. Now, if I wanted to, I'm going to merge these down. If you're feeling confident and you're ready to go, you can combine these layers so that now the colors and lines are, are together. But to be on the safe side, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to group these layers. So hit control G or you could do layer, group layers. So let's call this uh, sketches colored. And now I'm gonna do something cool. I'm gonna take this entire group and duplicate it. So no matter how many layers are in that group, I can drag this to this little plus sign right down here and release. And now I have sketches colored copy. So I'm gonna make the sketches colored invisible, but I do want to show you that I do have two copies of these. Okay. So let's turn off sketches colored. Okay. That's the original and I'm going to move this copy. Uh, but what I want to do is, is combine this group into one layer. So what I'm going to do is hit layer merge group. Okay. Or control E. And now that group has turned into a layer. All right. I do want to be able to manipulate each of these shapes. So what I'm going to do is just make a couple quick selections and I'm going to show you the, the menu command and then I will show you the keyboard command. So layer, new, layer via cut. So that's going to take whatever selected, cut it and put it on new layer. Boom. All right. So now my laptop is on its own layer and I can move it independently. And I can do the same thing with these other objects. Just make sure your sketches colored layer is copied but the, the keyboard command is control shift J. All right, so now that's on its own layer. It's a lot of work, yes, but it also would have been a lot of work to have those layers up front. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be work either way, but more importantly, it is fun. Okay, so now I have all these layers. Okay, if I want to, just another tip. I believe when you install Photoshop, auto select layer, in your top menu bar is selected by default. And what that does, it means that if my move tool is selected, I can just navigate my document like this and click on whatever's on the screen. It automatically selects it. Watch what's happening in a layer palette to the right, okay? All these layers are being automatically selected. Personally, I don't like that, so I turn it off by default. So if you're wondering why is he, why is his so weird, <laughs> that's why. So I turn that off and if you want to enable that, just hold command or control on the keyboard and then you're able to pick those pixels and move them around. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make a pattern, all right? And 
let me save this before we get messed up. So I'll just go to my desktop and I'll just save it as untitled for now. Just in case, I'm a little paranoid because that was a lot of work. <laughs> Always save, save your work when you can. Photoshop does recover documents, but you never know. I've been through a lot of traumatic experiences in my life, <laughs> losing files. All right, so let's make a new file. And it doesn't really matter what size. I just want to show you something. So let's take a couple guides and we're going to basically form a square here or rectangle, some rectilinear shape. It doesn't really matter. It, uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter if it's a rectangle or a square, it just needs to have four guides. And what I want to do here now is let's say I have a shape. I'm going to do this on a new layer. Let's say I have this square shape, okay? And I want to make a text, uh, a pattern out of this. I can actually, inside this boundary shape, duplicate these squares. Let's say like this. All right, just, just put them anywhere in here. And now when I make a selection, actually I want to combine these layers, okay? So just select those layers, merge them down. Now I can select like so. Actually, I do believe I need, well, we'll see how this goes. And then I'm going to go edit, define pattern. Okay. This is how I've always done it. This is, you know, I'm not using uh, capture at this point. I'm just showing you how to manually create a pattern here. So let's just hit okay, pattern one. Now, if I turn this layer off and I go to my paint bucket, okay, I have the option to use foreground or pattern if you click on this button. If I go to pattern, I have some patterns on my computer that are loaded already, but here's that new pattern that I created. Let me expand this. Let's see, we can make a large list. All right, well actually, large thumbnail. So you can see, there's my pattern. So now, if I make a new layer and I have my paint bucket selected and I click, it's now placing all those shapes in a pattern, okay? Pretty cool. So what that means, and we can use this document to create our new pattern that I wanted to as well, or we can make our own, oops. We can make our own in this document, but the idea is to then place these elements in that space and create a pattern. If you wanna make something seamless, there's a couple other things we need to do though. So I'll show you with our example again. So I have this this guide set up and let's throw a little square in here. And now I can move this square like so. Okay, and because I have snaps turned on, it's snapping the center of this shape to the center of this intersection. Okay, and I can drag this over like so. Oops, we'll just have that snap. All right, and we can drag these down. It snaps, those pink lines are super handy. Photoshop is really smart. And now, I can, let's say I want to put something else in here, like another shape, right? Now, when I make the selection within my guides and I hit edit, actually, yeah, let's hit edit, define pattern. This is a really big pattern, so I need to make this smaller, which is why I hesitate a little bit, but hopefully you get the point and you'll see Ah, what is happening here? Wrong keyboard commands. <laughs> Hopefully you'll see um, what I mean. All right. I'm going to make the canvas bigger so you'll, you'll get a better appreciation for this. So now on a new layer, if I fill with that pattern, oops, wrong pattern. I need to make sure I change it up here, pick that new one. And when I click, it's repeating that shape and filling, filling the entire canvas with that stuff. Okay, so that's a simple example and you notice it's seamless. The elements are repeated, looks great, cool. So what if I wanna do that with my illustrations? Well, yes, you absolutely can do that, okay? So we can go back to our icons here. And once again, because I like to be as non-destructive as possible, I'm gonna duplicate, make a copy of these and kind of save them. But I do want to scale these down. So I'm gonna go edit, free transform, all right? We'll scale these down, maybe something like that. And let's just set up a quick guide system here. 
And like I said, you just need to figure out, okay, do I want this to be a square pattern or do I want this to be something of a more rectangular pattern? I'm gonna go for, let's see, we've got five things. I'm gonna go for a rectangle. Like I mentioned, he is Jamaican. So let's go ahead and just place that in the middle. <clears throat> Maybe scale it up a little bit and we can even rotate like so. Let's take the book and we're gonna put this and I'm gonna do something here. I'm gonna put the book so that it's overlapped. All right, overlapping that guide. And that's because I want a nice seamless pattern that uh, doesn't, doesn't feel like it's necessarily on a grid, okay? So let's go ahead and place that flag and then the laptop, we can kind of do the same thing here. Scale it up maybe just a little bit. And let's take the sports ball. <laughs> and place it maybe something something like this kind of rotate it actually i'm going to put it more like there and you'll see why in just a sec okay so flags in the middle got my stake i'm actually going to move my stake down and if you ever want to move a guide if you hover over the guide with your move tool you'll notice that the, the cursor changes so i can click and now i can move this guide to wherever i want and this is important when you're doing a pattern i'll show you why All right, so let's move this up. And as I'm doing this pattern, what I'm trying to do is imagine, imagine where the other half of the shape will appear, okay? So for example, let's, let's start with the laptop because I keep fudging with this sports ball and I wanna show you why. So if I click on the laptop layer and zoom in, what I actually wanna do is make a selection. Now, because I have view snap turned on, when I make my selection with the marquee tool or the selection tool, it's gonna snap to this guide, right? So if I zoom in here, I'll show you, I'm close to the guide and I start my selection, even though I'm a few pixels away, Photoshop says, oh, I'm gonna pull you into that guide, okay? So just get close enough. And now what I wanna do is take this laptop shape right here, and I'm gonna do layer, new, layer via copy, all right? And once I've done that, I can take these pixels that are copied. Now, really important here, you need to make sure you have shift turned on, all right? Make sure you have shift turned on. So I'm gonna drag this over like so. And now I have the other part of, <laughs> Steve says, try eating a steak that's bigger than a laptop. That would be difficult. But now I have this laptop repeated. And that's what I was kind of talking about. I, I was trying to make sure there wouldn't be any interference here, just to keep it simple for you guys today. So on the football layer, I'm gonna kind of do the same thing on this side. Let's go to layer, new, layer via copy. And with my move tool, holding shift, we see those pink guides. I can move this over like so with the stake. We're gonna do the same thing. I'm taking the outside of the stake because I want that to be repeated on the inside. The shortcut for duplicating the layer is Control or Command J. And now we can place that down here, like so. For the book, uh, I think I'm gonna make the book a little bigger as well. Yeah, we're going we're going for effect here, not not uh, precision with the scale of these objects. All right, so now let's take this book and I'm gonna hit Control J again. We'll drag this over, all right? So hopefully you can kind of see what's happening. I do wanna make sure this snaps. If you overshoot the guide, it's okay. Just drag it back and Photoshop should snap it in place for you. It's referencing something weird here. So I just need to make sure Ah, the football wasn't wasn't placed perfectly. If you need to nudge, you can use the up, down, left, right keys on your keyboard. So I'm gonna hit one time and nudge this over. But actually, let's get this out of the way and I'll do the book pixels first. Cause if I don't get this right, it's gonna... It's not gonna like me. Actually, I think what I'll do is move my guideline. Yeah, I'll move my guideline and then let's redo the laptop portion. So I think it was it was placed like 
a half pixel over or something like that. All right, this should be a better repeat. So let's redo the laptop portion. Let's duplicate that. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this layer and now drag this over to make sure we have a good snap. Okay. And I'll have to redo the football as well, but it's okay. Really quick, hopefully you guys are kind of getting the idea here. Make a selection, duplicate. And now I could just move this over and we have a good snap. So since I'm checking my snaps, I will check my top to bottom as well. Truth be told, it probably won't show that much, but let's just make sure. Whew, okay, fix those. And so we have our book, we have the flag, we have the laptop. The flag even, if we wanted to, you know, if this was a central part of the pattern, you could make it bigger. Um, you could even have the flag underneath something. And the reason for that is it's in the middle of, of the pattern repeat here. Okay, so if I wanted two flags, I could do that as well. Maybe flip these. So if we go transform, flip horizontal, we can do that as well. Play with the scale if we want. And since it's Father's Day, let's add a couple more things here. So on the inside of this pattern, what I want to do is now draw maybe just a couple of things. I love my dad, so let's put some hearts. Let's put some hearts in here. I'm definitely not the best at drawing hearts. Now if it was a sci-fi heart, maybe. I do a lot of sci-fi illustrations. <laughs> But again, if you're like me and you struggle with drawing a heart, you can hit transform, hit that warp tool, and then make the adjustments you need uh, to make it look the way you really want it to look, okay? Maybe even scale it down like so. And I'll just go ahead and duplicate. A little tip here, if you wanna duplicate a shape that you drew, Justin says use symmetry. Yeah, I could use symmetry, but um, there's something beautiful, I think, in drawing about imperfection so as much as I do have access to tools I tend to not use them very often all right so there's another heart and let's do maybe another one down in here and again just to help with the line weight being consistent I'll just trace over this one like so just so they feel a little bit a little bit better And I can duplicate again. Maybe have another one up here. I probably should have added the color first, but I'll just do that real quick. So let me add some quick color, turn up the saturation, brightness. I'm gonna tap my in gamut color here. And let's get painting. All right, turn off this airbrush thing. There we go. That was the problem. If you're painting and you notice you paint over pixels, chances are you're either painting on the same layer or you are above that layer. So there I've moved layer 13 down. We're going to merge this all together, so I'm not too concerned about names right now. Let's go ahead and just fill these in. You could paint bucket in the lines if you want, but again, my habit tends toward being non-destructive. So I always work under my lines when I can, just in case I need to change something. All right, so just like that. Okay, so I've got some hearts and let's go ahead and add just a little bit of highlight here. I don't like that pink, feels like a weird gray. <laughs> so I'm gonna move to, okay, that's a little bit better. Right there, 
And yeah, if you if you touch these up individually, it does give it a more handcrafted feel, I think. If you wanted them to smile, you could. Whatever you, whatever you want to do with your hearts or your illustrations, make it work. All right. Just like that. All right. Yeah, I'm not sure why smoothing isn't working yet. I'll have to figure that one out. A couple more things. If if the laptop is overlapping the flag, I may want to add something of a shadow here. Okay. So where you do have elements that are overlapping, I'm just going to take some black and draw over the flag like so, but adjust the opacity of that layer so it feels like a shadow. All right. If you wanted everything to have a shadow in your pattern, you could do that as well. Okay, but I'm just gonna have it over the flag and then here with the book as well. And again, this will all be merged, so I'm not too concerned about the layer naming at this point. Let's crank the opacity down again. And let's see, how are we on shadows? Okay, we're good. So if there's any other elements you wanted to add, um, you know, I may, let me merge these and then we'll play with adding a couple more things that I think would help out. All right. So I'm just going to pick all these la layers to do that. You do, if I tap layer nine, super unique name, if I tap layer nine, scroll down to layer four, which is my bottom layer while holding shift and then click shift. Sean says it must be turned off in my brush settings. Maybe I'm not, I'm not quite sure. It's really weird. Um, but if I hold shift, click all the way down, then it's going to select all these layers. And I know they're selected because they are highlighted. Okay. Now I'm going to merge these layers. So layer merge layers. Okay. If I turn this on or off, you'll notice that the illustration disappears and reappears. Again, I backed up everything. Think of it that way. I backed up everything on a separate layer group one. So if I want to make a different arrangement or pattern, I can always go do that. Um, I could have also done this. I'll show you just a sec here. Instead of merging, another thing you can do, let's go back to layer nine and all the way down. I could group these together, kind of like we did before, just a quick backup drag this down, duplicate it all. It does make your file a little heavier, but the plus side is I do have these elements in a group and I can rearrange things anytime I need. So that's why I like to work non-destructively. All right, so now we have this selection and similar to our other document that we were kind of playing with where we developed our patterns, right? Simple shapes. We're gonna kind of do the same thing here using the select tool. So tap at the corner of where these guides intersect. And we made sure that we adjusted these guides. We adjusted the illustrations. We duplicated everything. So fingers crossed this should work. So here I'm going to make a selection like so. And now I can go to edit, define pattern, right? It's going to pull this in. It's going to call it pattern three. Let's call it Father's Day. Father's Day one, because we're going to do another pattern or make some changes rather. Let's turn this off. And now if I wanted to fill this entire area or within my printable bout border, like so, I can just make a selection in here. Go to my paint bucket tool under how I want to fill. Do I want to fill with a foreground color? Do I want to fill with a pattern, I'm going to select pattern. And then under pattern, you'll notice that I now have my Father's Day pattern. Okay. It's screaming at me because this layer is hidden and it's saying, oh, I can't use the paint bucket tool. So if Photoshop screams at you, it's usually for a good reason. So let's make a new layer, layer, new layer. And we'll call this pattern one. And now I just click and I'm going to turn these guides off. If you ever want to turn your guides off, you can go to view and show and turn off guides. I got lucky finding that command because I know the keyboard command very well. <laughs> view show guides, you turn those off and now they're invisible. 
And if I deselect, you'll see that now we have a seamless pattern, okay? That has filled the page. Pretty cool. And you can do this with pretty much any drawing if you're strategic and you think about it um, before you put it down. All right, so I do wanna make some changes to this pattern. So what I'm gonna do is let's turn this off and let's turn on our pattern here and we'll turn back our guides. <clears throat> Now I don't need to go back to my original layers because I just want to play around and experiment. What if what if I want a little bit more depth to this to this pattern, okay? I'm going to take my brush here. Actually, let's do a new layer just so I can play with the opacity or the values. So let's say I want to add just some fun squiggles, okay? To the pattern. You can just add some squiggles in here. Wherever you feel needs them. Maybe it's the football. <laughs> Maybe it's in between all this stuff. I'm trying to be as smooth as I can. I was hoping to turn on smoothing for you guys so you could see. I'm going to have to look into that. I have had some weird things happen with my tablet recently, so very possible that could be part of it. All right, so we added some squiggles here and I wanna adjust the brightness of these. They, they look a little bit too intense because they're taking away from the main illustration. I want them to fall back. So let's go to image, make sure we're selecting the right layer. So as not to confuse you guys, I'll call these squiggles, squiggles one. Image adjustments, hue saturation. You could also adjust levels, but this is nice because I can just adjust the lightness slider and if I slide that notice what's happening to these gray lines let's zoom in so you can see I want them to be pretty light okay something like that let's hit OK and now again I'm just in that habit of, of working non-destructively non-destructively I've created a group I'm duplicating that group and now I'm going to flatten that group so that I can define this new pattern so just just habit because of painful experience in the past so let's go to edit, define pattern, Father's Day 2, hit OK, and we can kind of test that out and see what it looks like. Make a selection again. Actually, I'm going to make this easy from easier for myself. What I'm going to do here is make a selection on the inside. Remember, we put these initial guides in just to give myself a little bit of room for my printer so I'm not printing edge to edge. So let's make a layer on the very top here, layer, new layer. And I'm going to do something to make a border, OK? And there's a few different ways to do this. I could add a stroke to this selection. But what I want to do is go to Select, Inverse. And that's going to take everything that isn't selected and now selected. And that happens to be this nice white border. And now I can fill that in. Remember I, I mentioned control delete. We'll use the background color to fill something. So just for illustration purposes, you'll notice that in my color picker, white is in the foreground and black is in the background. If I hit control delete, that is now filled that area, just that perimeter with black. So if the colors are switched, there is white. There's white on that layer. And if I turn off my background layer, you'll notice there's a white border. Now, just to preserve and make this simple for myself, I'm going to do something called locking the layer. Now, locking the layer is gonna mean that, let's call this white border. White border. So locking the layer means I can't paint, I can't transform, I can't do anything with that layer. I can move it up and down, but that's it. So here, under the blend mode dialog next to fill and cl in close proximity to opacity, you'll notice this padlock. So just like you lock a door, you can't open it. We're going to lock this layer. And now we can't we can't paint on the layer. It's going to scream at me. Oh, the brush, we can't use the brush tool because the layer is locked. All right, cool. The reason I did that is it's going to save me the trouble of having to select within that guide again. And I can actually turn the guide off. And now when I go to fill and pick that new pattern we created with the squiggles, you'll notice that I have a nice, neat crop. OK, so just a, just a quick way to have that pattern. All right, <clears throat> so we have one pattern. Let's try one more thing, and then we can decide which one we like the best. All right, 
So let's go one more time here to our group. Again, I saved it, in effect. Right? We have squiggles there. And I'm going to turn those off. I'll turn the guides on just to help me out. And let's make a new layer. And I'm just going to write, you, you could write a little message in here. You know, I'm going to write, uh, I love you. So use the same brush. And I'm going to pick a light gray just to save me the trouble. So let's zoom in. Just write it. I like handwriting again where possible, but we'll, we'll use the text tool to finish this one up. You could duplicate these as well if you wanted to. But I do tend to prefer the natural approach to having that handwriting in place. So I was, I was considering if you wanted to have the text as a pattern as well, or part of the pattern, you could actually have it span over and then duplicate and place it. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spare myself the trouble right now. Um, and then let's go ahead and just add a couple of other elements here. Maybe it's just some straight lines. Actually, those are too close an angle. Just want to keep it a little bit random. Okay, something like that. All right, so now I've got some text, a little bit of message in there as well. It's still a little bit too bright for me though, so I'm gonna make that adjustment again. And let's go super light, all right? Just so it's a, a textural element, but it's not screaming at us in the foreground. Once again, I am watching the chat, so if you have any comments, questions, things you missed, let me know. Okay, merge those together. And now I'm going to make a selection, do the same thing again. So now I've done this four or five times. You guys should be masters of pattern making, Father's Day 3. And the most important thing, again, is just to get creative, but understanding the mechanics of how you do it enables you to do whatever you want. All right. Or as I like to say when I teach drawing, when you understand the why, the how becomes so much easier. Um, so hopefully you understand the why of where I place the guides and move things and position things in a certain way. All right. So now we have that pattern defined. Let's turn this off and we'll finish up our design. Remember, the eyeball next to these layers just means, can, I, can we see the layer or not? All right. This one is pattern two. So we'll call this pattern three. And these are all stored. So if I ever want to go back and use these patterns, they are there in my patterns palette, like so. And I'm going to go ahead and just fill. Let's turn off these guides. And you'll see now we have a bit of texture with the words I love you included in our pattern. All right. So now let's go ahead and add some text to this design and we'll wrap up and finish up as well. Another thing you can do, I don't know if you guys have played with layer effects much, um, but one thing you can do, and I hope this one works, it should work. So, <laughs> If I double click on the layer, I have this layer style window pop up. And I have some options here. I can add a drop shadow, outer glow, color overlays, gradient overlays. Most importantly, just play with it and see what you come up with. But I am going to pick stroke. And you'll notice that I now have a thick line on the inside. Now, let's say I just want that to be kind of a gray line similar to the color of this text. If I tap on stroke, I have some options here under color. 
I can pick the color in this picker or I can move to my image. Let's zoom in, command spacebar, let's you zoom in. And I can actually pick the color of my text, all right? So if I just wanted a little buffer before I hit the white, I can do that. Hit OK. And you can also adjust the size and you'll see that preview update live, okay? So if you're looking to add you know, something just to finish off the area so it doesn't feel as abrupt, you can do that. Another thing I just wanna show you guys you could do, I'm not a huge fan of them, but if you wanted to add a drop shadow or something, you could do that. Let's look at the options here. Okay, so on these options, I can adjust the opacity, the size, Right, I can scale that down. It almost looks three-dimensional. It's kind of cool. So I do I do use drop shadows in digital designs from time to time to give a bit of depth. So if this were a card I was sending digitally to my father, I might do something like that um, just to kind of help things out. All right. So a couple more things here we'll do. So the pattern itself, before we get to text, the pattern itself, I feel, needs a little bit more natural look and feel. So I'm going to make a new layer. And I'm trying to think of the best way to do this. I do have these brushes that I have. Um, they are background and texture brushes right here. And I have like these watercolor and ink washes. And I'm hoping I can just add a little texture to all this. OK, this should work. So I'm just going to make this brush really big. and Let's go ahead and just do black for now. And what I'm going to do is just kind of use this and blending modes, OK, to kind of add a little bit of texture. Again, a lot of this is just experimentation and figuring out what works for you. Um, let's see. I'll stick with either screen or lighten, I think. OK. And when you look at it now, there's you know a little bit of variation now introduced. It's very, very subtle. Okay, so that's one thing I like to do. The other thing I like to do, and this, this may look a little bit scary, but I'm gonna fill the whole thing with black. And then I'm gonna use what's called a filter. So Photoshop has these filters, and these are just effects that are baked in. One of the ones I like to use is filter noise, add noise. Okay, it's gonna ask me how much, I think yours is it's usually set to a very low amount. I'm going to crank it up, make it monochromatic. Okay, hit OK. And now I'm going to switch that blending mode to either multiply or light or uh, overlay. Okay. Now, by default, because the layer is 100% opacity, it looks crazy. It's like, whoa, you messed up your illustration. But really, what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of noise or what's called dithering to it okay so now and you hopefully you can see that maybe not there it is off there it is on off on it just adds a little bit of texture to the illustration so normally I'm about you know three percent two percent in terms of the opacity and also playing with the blending mode to get that that look and feel all right so just two quick tips to help you if you're printing um, I find that with, with a little bit of noise added, my prints just look and feel better. All right, so let's, talk, let's do some quick text, and then we'll wrap up here. So the text tool, pretty powerful, pretty straightforward. Once we click, we're now given this cursor. And anywhere I click on the canvas, Photoshop's going to say, OK, that's where you want to put your text. And I'm going to keep this one super simple. Just say, Happy Father's Day. I love you. So. Once I click, it's picking up the last font I used. And this font actually works, Cubano. It's, a, it's actually a free font you can get through Adobe Creative Cloud. And what's cool about fonts, again, with Creative Cloud is if you want to find more fonts, you can just hit more from Adobe or more from Adobe fonts. Click on that. It'll open up the website, and you can get your fonts that way. So feel free to explore that. OK, so now I have this text. and. To set the text, you hit Enter. To modify the text, just hit that text cursor and click in the text field. So we'll have this say, Happy Father's. We'll adjust this in just a sec. Actually, a better way to do this, now that I think about it, is to just draw a rectangle. So with the text tool, you can click and drag a rectangle, just like that. And now I can type, Happy Father's Day. All right, it's not fitting. 
in the box. So what I need to do is click on the handle on the text box, just like that. And we can go a little bit wider as well and also adjust the text size. But we'll just, we'll start here. <clears throat> so now I need to change the color of the text and add what's called, just like we did with the pattern layer, a layer style to this. Because I have an idea in mind. I want the text to stand out from the background because it's really busy. So now I'm going to change the text color to white. Okay, I have this color picker that pops up. And if you're wondering how I did that, there's that little square on your top bar on your window next to these options to adjust the paragraph style. Right now it's black. You can also click on your color picker over here, or you can use your color sliders over here. So that's three ways to do it. I just happened to click on the square. And now I can drag up to white. Okay, still looks a little bit busy, so we need to set this off. All right. So you'll also notice that with the text, the, the layer name has changed. So the layer name is the same as the text that you type. Super handy because you don't have to, um, super handy because you don't have to label that layer. Sorry, I got a little distracted by the chat there. Okay, so now if I double click, I can turn on a stroke. It's gonna use the previous stroke setting, but this time I want it to be a black color. Okay, something like that. And we can also adjust the thickness of the stroke with the size command, like so. All right, hit OK. And there's also a couple things we can adjust. So let's say we want to uh, adjust the paragraph style. Make sure all your text is selected. Control, Control A or Command A will do select all. And if I tap here, I now have a left justification. I can have a right justification, center. If I need more options, there is a window. If you go to window, character, okay, or paragraph, it'll pull up the same text window, or you can click on this little icon with the folder with the lines on it next to the cancel icon. And that's going to pull up your options. And in this pal panel, you have options like, hey, how much space do I want between the lines? Right now it's set to auto. So I'm going to click here, actually click on this icon. And if I drag side to side, it gives me a live preview and update of how tight or how spaced out the text is. So I want mine a little bit tighter. All right. So I'm just going to visually adjust this to whatever I like. You can click off, see what that looks like. And if that's what you want, hit OK. If you want a bit more flexibility with your text, one thing I like to do, <clears throat> pardon me, is let's see, it's not going to let me do it here. Yeah, I would need to have a different uh, layer for the text. So if you wanted to move your the word happy and put it somewhere else, we can actually just go ahead and do edit, cut. It's going to take that text, remove it. All right. And let's say I wanted happy in a different position. I can actually go ahead, create a new text space, hit paste. And you'll notice that these two layers have different styles or appearances, and sometimes you might want to duplicate that, okay? So I can actually, holding Alt, click on this word that says effects in my layer, click and drag onto happy, and now it has the same appearance. And now I at least have the flexibility of being able to move happy wherever I want. If I wanted to overlap that border a little bit, I can do that. If I want to scale fathers up. So if you do want that flexibility, that's another way to do it. All right, so I think we're coming to the end here. I just want to touch on the schedule and say thanks for watching and hanging out. This definitely needs a little bit more work, but playing with the text and pattern and trying to create the right balance is something that you know takes time and a little bit of iteration as well. So coming up today, we have the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge up next with Paul full day of awesome content for you guys. So thanks thanks for you, <laughs> or thanks to you rather, for joining. Um, we've got photo compositing, the daily Illustrator Creative Challenge, branding and identity design, the Adobe XD Daily Creative Challenge, draw along with Cal Webster, always a good one, and design off with Voodoo Val and Claudi. Well, thanks guys for hanging out and joining. Much appreciated. And I hope to see you guys soon. Get out there, get creating, stay positive, stay healthy, stay safe, 
and we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.